Configuring Windows Vista Networking With each version of Microsoft Windows, configuring networking has gotten much easier and with the new Windows Vista operating system, this trend continues and that's good news for home users in particular, but for us corporate users who tend to deal with networking on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll probably be able to jump straight into Windows Vista and immediately configure networking, although the interface is slightly different. So in this video, we'll take a look at the basics of Windows networking with workgroups, and then we'll move on and take a look at how to join Windows Vista computers to a domain. Now before we get started here, from a Windows Vista perspective, some things have changed under the hood with TCP IP, and whilst you don't interact with them directly, they are there running in the background. Now firstly, the performance of TCP IP is supposedly better than previous versions of Windows. Now I haven't personally done any benchmarks myself to either prove or refute Microsoft's claims here, however Microsoft claim that they have made changes to the TCP IP stack on Windows Vista so that it can dynamically adjust its receiving windows for better performance. Vista also provides better troubleshooting for networking problems and throws in a dual layer IP version 4 and IP version 6 capability so that Vista will work out of the box with IP version 6 without you having to do anything. Now the configuration of Windows Vista networking is done through a new interface called the Network and Sharing Center, so let's go take a look at it. So to get to the Network and Sharing Center, we have a few ways we can get there, and all of them are pretty similar. Firstly, down here in the system tray, you can see this network icon with this Earth image over it, which by the way, indicates that we do have internet access from this computer. So if yours doesn't show the Earth over the top of the little network icon, then you most likely won't be getting out onto the internet. So if we right click on this icon here, we can choose the bottom option which will fire up the Network and Sharing Center. And I will tell you up front that this is most likely the method you're going to use as it's probably the quickest. Now another way to open up the Network and Sharing Center is to go and click on Start and then choose Network. And this brings up the network window which most users would probably recognize as like the old network neighborhood style window and at the top here of this window we can click on networking sharing center now another way to get to the same place we can go through the control panel we can click on start launch the control panel we'll choose network and internet at the top we can then launch the network and sharing center and of course the other way we could simply go through the start menu we'll click start we'll just type in network and then we can launch the Network and Sharing Center that way. Okay, so this is the Network and Sharing Center, and this is where you'll perform practically all of your network configuration right from this window. Now at the top of this window here, the thing you'd have probably noticed straight away is the basic network map that depicts my network of my Vista machine here with the host name of Vista Client 01. It's connected to my router, which in turn provides my connection to the internet. Now one of the nice features about this map is that if you are experiencing problems with any part of your network, then that part on the map will be grayed out. So let's say that my router here is having problems connecting to my ISP, then I wouldn't have internet access. And in this earth icon here would be grayed out, indicating I can't get out to the net. Now we can also view a full network map as well and Vista will then build a map that is representative of our network depending on what interface we've selected. Now since I only have a single network card in this machine, we can't select any other cards, but if you do have another network card in your computer, whether it be another Ethernet card or perhaps a wireless network card, then you'll see a drop down box up here at the top of this window, and if you select a different card, then the network map may appear slightly different as it's then built from that network card's perspective. Now I will point out one thing here. Since I'm connected to a work group, this all works just fine. But if your computer is joined to a domain and you try to view the full network map, you'll be told that you can't without first going making a change to group policy. So for you guys connected to a domain, 
you'll probably want to make use of this network map. So to fix it, so that you can use it, we'll go and click on start. We'll type in gpedit.msc and we'll hit enter. And then we'll click continue on our user account control message. Now under our computer configuration, we'll expand administrative templates. We'll then expand network. And then we'll choose link layer topology discovery. Now in the right hand side of our console here, we've got two options. The first one is the one we need to configure, although I'll quickly just mention what they both do. So the first is to turn on the mapper IO, and this is used to discover other devices in the network. So we'll need to enable this policy for our network map to work when connected to a domain. So we'll right click on this policy, we'll choose properties, and then we'll change this to enabled, and we can leave the defaults here to allow operation whilst in a domain which is the most important one here, and we'll click on OK. Now the other policy here is to turn on the responder, which is basically the opposite of the first policy. So the first policy in its simplest explanation allows us to discover other computers. This second policy allows other computers to discover us. Again, when we right click on it, we'll choose properties, we'll need to enable this policy, and the settings are exactly the same as the previous policy, so we'll just click on OK. All right, now once you've made these changes, they'll be live. So if you have the network map open, close it, reopen it, and it will then populate as you expect. But that's only for Vista computers that are connected to a domain. So if your Vista computer is currently configured in a work group, you won't need to do this. Now also notice, by the way, that these icons here have these two green lines close together now this indicates that I'm using a wired connection, probably with Cat5 or Cat6 cable, but if you're using a wireless connection, then you'll see these lines change to a dashed line. Now you can also click on these icons here as well. Clicking on the My Computer icon here will simply open up Windows Explorer. If we click on our Gateway icon, it's going to open up our old Network Neighbourhood style view. And if we click on the Earth icon, that's going to fire up Internet Explorer. All right, now, beneath our network map, you can see the type of network that we're connected to, which is a private network, which is providing my local and Internet access here via our local area connection, which is my Ethernet card inside my computer. Now, if we click on this Customize link, we could then change our network location type to a public network if we like, which will turn discovery off. We could also change the name of our network as well. And if you're really pedantic about it, you can change the style of icon that represents the network on the map. Now we can also view the status of our network connection as well. And this is the same sort of information you'd expect from Windows XP. So not much has really changed here. So we can check out the properties of our network card. We could disable this interface if we like. And we could diagnose any problems that we might be experiencing with this connection. And if we click on the properties button, most of you Windows XP users would instantly recognize this window where we can configure our network card. And now whilst we can do that from this window, of course, let's just cancel this for now. And if we come over here to our tasks on our left hand side of this window and we'll click on manage network connections, we'll see all of our network connections we have on our computer and we can configure these cards in exactly the same way as previous Windows operating systems by right clicking on it and then choosing properties. All right, well, let's quickly run through these items in this list here. Although most of you listening to this video are probably well aware of what they do. Now the first we have Client for Microsoft Networks. Now this is used by Windows to allow your computer to access other devices on the network. The Quality of Service Packet Scheduler service is used for services that can take advantage of QoS like Voice over IP and media streaming. Next we have File and printer sharing, which as the name suggests, 
is used to allow other computers to access files, folders and printers on your computer. Now in most cases you'll leave this turned on unless this interface happens to be an internet facing network card on a firewall. Now we have IP version 6 and IP version 4 which is the TCP IP protocol which you want to leave enabled of course. Now down the bottom here we have the link layer topology mapper and responder which are used to discover other devices in the network and to let other devices discover your computer. Now if we click on the configure button at the top here we can further configure our network card and I won't go too much into the properties here because this will be different for different network cards. But specifically on the driver tab if you are having problems with this card or there's a newer driver that you want to install you can do that by clicking here on this update driver button and then simply browsing for where you have the drivers. Alright, well let's just cancel this for now and I'm going to right click on my network card again and we'll choose properties and then we'll select our IP version 4 and we'll choose properties again and as you can see by this window this is exactly the same as you'd be used to in Windows XP. Now we could use a DHCP server to supply this computer with an IP address and if you're on a domain or a home user connecting to the internet through a DSL modem or cable modem you might be required to use DHCP in which case you'll just simply check this top radio button here. And down the bottom in most cases the same is going to apply as you'll likely need to obtain a DNS server address automatically which is going to be provided by the DHCP server. Now if like me you don't have a DHCP server handy you can enter in these values manually and use a static IP address and then just simply enter in the default gateway and the DNS server addresses and you're done. Now again this hasn't changed from Windows XP so you guys listening to this probably aren't seeing anything new here. Okay well let's go back to our network and sharing center and we'll see how we can connect Windows Vista to a network. Now since I'm already connected to a network if we choose the second option here connect to a network you can see it tells us here that we're already connected to one. So really there's nothing to do here. But if we had another network card in our computer which isn't yet configured such as a wireless network card then you'd see an option to configure that in the middle of this window. Now down the bottom of this window here we can also try and diagnose problems if we're experiencing problems connecting to a network and surprisingly this is rather good for low level problem diagnosis as it will tell you things like if a network cable isn't plugged in and that's something which has tricked up a lot of us in the past. Now we can also set up a connection or network as well and if I actually slide this window across the very next item here in our task is to do that and this is exactly the same so let's go and take a look at how we can set up a new connection. Okay so we have four options here but be aware that if you're doing this on your computer you might have more available connection choices than I have here. For example if you have Bluetooth on your notebook you'll see Bluetooth listed here or if you have a wireless network card you'll see additional wireless options here as well. Okay so the standard options you're likely to see on your PC regardless of its configuration is to set up wireless broadband or dial-up connections to access the internet. We can configure a wireless router or access point, a dial-up connection which we all loathe nowadays unless it's last resort and we can connect to a workplace using a dial-up or VPN connection. So let's go and run through these one by one. So we'll select the first option here to connect to the internet and we'll click next. Now since I'm already connected to the internet we're told that and we could simply click on browse the internet now and that's going to open up Internet Explorer or we could just go and set up a new connection anyway. So let's go and choose the second option. Okay from this window here we can choose how we want to connect to the internet and since I don't have a dial-up modem attached to this computer that option is hidden from me but I still can create a connection for a modem if we like by checking this box down the bottom here and then I can plug my modem in later on. Alright well we'll click the top option 
since we'll see this dial-up option later on. So we'll click the top one here. Then we'll need to enter in a username and password for our connection. And of course, these details will be supplied by the internet service provider that we signed up with. Now we can also choose to show the actual characters in our password if we like, which of course isn't recommended as anyone can see it. And the final thing we'll need to do is give this connection a name and that can be whatever you like. And down the bottom here, we can decide if a user that logs onto this computer can use this connection. If we just hit connect here and you entered in everything correctly, you should be connected to the internet. All right, well, I'll cancel this now and we'll go and set up another connection. And this time we'll choose to set up the wireless router or access point that we want to connect to. And in most cases, you'll be using a notebook with a wireless card to connect to a wireless router or wireless access point. But of course, some desktop computers also have wireless as well. So we'll select that, we'll click next. And we'll get this little summary of the things that we'll be configuring in the wizard. So we'll click next again. Okay, in this new window that pops up here, we're given the option of configuring this device manually. And if I select this option, it's going to fire up the inbuilt administration page for my router, which as you can see, is a D-Link router here. But of course, it'll only do that if you have Vista certified hardware. But if we close this, I don't actually, of course, have a wireless device attached to this PC. So my second option here is to be able to create the settings and save it to a USB flash drive. So we'll select this option. The first thing we're going to do is have to enter in the network name or the SSID for our network. Now, by the way, this SSID is very important because if this was a notebook computer I was on right now and I wanted to connect to a wireless network, what will happen is this. My computer is going to pluck the signal out of the air and say, hey, I've found a wireless network and it's going to ask me for its SSID. Now, this name can be anything you like, up to 32 characters, but I'm just going to leave this default here for these demonstration purposes, and we'll click Next. And now we'll need to enter in a passphrase, which is really just another term for a long password. So users are going to need to enter that when they try to connect to our wireless network. Now, if you don't like this default passphrase, you can certainly enter your own if you like, or we could get Windows to generate another one for us by clicking this first link here at the bottom. Now, like with our SSID on the previous page, when we try to connect to a wireless network that is secure, it's of course going to ask us for this password as well. Now, notice at the top here that Windows is going to use WPA authentication. And if you want to change that, then click this link here at the bottom. And from our drop down list here, we could choose from no security, which of course I certainly don't recommend, web security, which is just about as good as no security if you have someone poking around that knows what they're doing. And we have WPA and WPA2, WPA2 being the best security choice. Now, whatever you choose here will largely depend on your hardware though, since older wireless gear is probably only gonna support web encryption or possibly WPA. But for obvious reasons, I'd recommend that you select the strongest security that your hardware supports. So I'm just going to leave the default here at WPA. We'll click Next. And then we'll click Continue. And then we can choose to allow file and printer sharing for anyone that has a user account and password for this computer. And that's the default. Or we can allow sharing with anyone on the same network as our computer. Or we could simply not allow file and printer sharing at all. So we'll click Next. Okay, now from here, you can save these settings to a USB key and then use these settings to configure your wireless router or access point. Okay, well, the next option we have here in our list is to set up a dial-up connection. But if I had a wireless network card in my machine, we'd also see another option here for configuring a manual connection to a wireless network. But since my machine doesn't have a wireless network card in it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use remote desktop to access a notebook that I've got here sitting in the office, which does have a wireless network card. 
Okay, so I've just started up a remote desktop session to another computer here, and I've already opened up the Network and Sharing Center. So on the left here under our task heading, if we go and click on Set Up a Connection or Network, you can see that this time we do have the ability to create a wireless connection. So I'm going to choose that. We'll click Next. All right, like I said, when we set up the access point, we will need to create a network name here. And this is the SSID or the security identifier, if you like, for our wireless network. Now, depending on how the wireless network you want to connect to is set up, you might find that some networks broadcast their SSID and some don't. So when you come in here and manually create your connection, you'll need to know what the network name is. So I'm just going to enter in a network name of test here, which doesn't actually exist, but that's okay for our demonstration purposes. Now under our security type drop down box, you can select the type of security that you want to use for this connection, ranging from no security at all, which obviously I don't recommend, through to WPA2, and we've seen these before. So I'm just going to set mine here to say WPA. And then we'll need to choose what type of encryption we want to use in this example with WPA, and we can choose from TKIP or AES, and then we'll need to enter in a passphrase for this connection, and this has to be a minimum of eight characters all the way up to 64 characters. So I'm just going to enter in a passphrase here. Now at the bottom here, we can choose to start this connection automatically and connect even if the network isn't broadcasting, which isn't recommended since what will happen here is that my notebook will periodically try to connect to the wireless network. And of course, inside my connection packets will be the name of the network. So if there happens to be any malicious users lurking around capturing my packets, they'll be able to see what the network name of my wireless network is. And obviously, that name is no longer a secret. All right, well, we'll click Next. We've successfully added our new network, and now we can try to connect to this network, or we can change the connection properties. In fact, we can do this from another location as well. If I just click Close for now, and back in our Network and Sharing Center, if we choose to Manage Wireless Networks, here you can see the networks that we currently have configured, and Windows is going to try to connect to these networks in order from top to bottom. So it's going to try to connect to this test network first, and if that fails, it's going to then try to move on to this one. So if we select one of these networks from the list here, we'll say we'll choose our test one, and we can move it up and down in the list if we like. And if we right click on it and choose properties, we can then change any of the properties of the connection that we set when we configured this network a moment ago. So here we can see the name of the network, it's SSID and so on. And on the security tab, you can change the security types, the encryption, and of course the passphrase. Okay, so we've just seen how to create our own wireless connection manually. So if we go and click on start and choose connect to, we can see any networks that we're currently in range of. Now do take note here that my network called test that I just added doesn't appear here since it doesn't actually exist. So in this window, you'll see any networks that your wireless network card can detect, whether they're yours or not. Now you might have just taken your notebook down the road and in range of a wireless hotspot or perhaps a neighbor's house and any networks that your card can detect will be listed here. So in my case, I've found this network here, an unnamed network, which of course is my network, which I've set up. And if it was broadcasting its SSID, then we'd see it'd have a name here. So in order to connect to this network, we'll simply select it and then choose connect. And then we'll need to know and type in the network name or the SSID. Now I called this one P. FFT. It was a little bit of an in-joke there, so I'm going to type that in and then click Next. And now we'll need to enter in the passphrase for this network. So I'm going to type in the passphrase here. And then we'll click Connect. And then Windows is going to try and connect to the network. 
Okay, well we've successfully connected to our network here and we can now save this network and then start this connection automatically when we move inside the network's range. Now by the way, with this save this network box here, give some consideration to whether you really want to do this before you blindly just go ahead and click close. You see in my case, where this might be a local network that I connect to a lot, this is fine. But if you happen to be on the road a lot with your notebook and you move in and out of a lot of wireless networks, every time that you leave this box checked, then Windows is going to save each connection, leaving you with tens or possibly hundreds of old redundant connections that you may never use again. So for networks that you'll be reconnecting to regularly, leave this box checked, otherwise I'd uncheck it. Okay, well, back in our Network and Sharing Center, we'll have a look at the remaining network connection options we have. So we'll go ahead and click on Set Up a Connection again. Now this time we'll choose a dial-up connection and we'll click Next. Now my notebook here has two options using either Bluetooth or a modem, so I'm going to choose the second one, which is my modem. And setting up this dial-up connection is as simple as entering in the phone number that you want to dial, entering in your username and your password. Now you can also choose to remember this password as well if you like, so you don't have to type it in each time that you want to start it up. And of course we can allow any other users of this computer access to our connection as well. So that's all rather easy. Okay, so let's click the back button a couple of times and unlike most regular back buttons we expect to see them down here at the bottom, the back button in this window is this blue arrow icon here at the top. So I'll click this a couple of times, we'll just go back and then we'll just scroll down and we'll choose the next option here which is to set up a VPN connection and we'll click next. Now if you haven't used a VPN connection before, you'll probably be amazed at how simple it is to set up. But the real configuration is done at the other end of the connection where you set up a Windows server to accept incoming connections. But from a client perspective, it's only trivial to configure it. Okay, so we have two options when configuring a VPN connection. Do we want to go through our existing internet connection to connect to another network over the internet or do we want to dial it directly? Now whatever you choose here is really going to depend on how the VPN is set up at the other end of the connection and in most cases you'll probably be choosing the top option. But again, check with your own IT department as to which option you should choose. So the first thing that we'll need to configure is the host that we want to connect to. Now this could be an IP address or a host name and again you'll get this information from the people that you're trying to connect to. So I'm just going to enter in vpn.winstructorlab.com and we can give our VPN connection a name as well, which is a good idea, especially if you have several of them that you need to configure as it will help you identify what they're for later on. Now if your company uses smart cards for authentication, you can select that here. We can again allow other users of this computer access to this connection if we like. And we don't have to try and connect now, we can save this connection for later on if we like. So I'm going to check that box and we'll click Next. And the final thing we'll need to do is enter in the credentials of a user that has the ability to connect to this host via a VPN. So just enter in your username and password here. I'm just going to enter in a username of test and a password of test there. And then we can simply click on the Create button. But if in the previous window you chose not to save the connection, then this button here would just say connect. And so you can begin using your connection immediately. And that's it. It's very simple. Okay, now if we go and click on start and then click connect to, we'll also see any dial-up and VPN connections listed here alongside our wireless connections as well. So they're all located in the one easy to reach place ready to be used. Now back to our network and sharing center. In the bottom part of our network and sharing center is where we can turn on or turn off most of the common other configuration options such as network discovery which is currently on and of course 
things like file and printer sharing. Now, since most of these options here do relate to file and printer sharing, something that we'll be looking at in another video, I'm only going to concern myself here for the moment with the first option, which is network discovery. Although most of these here do work in the same way, all we need to do is simply click the on or off button to enable or disable this feature, and that's it really. However, from here, in addition to turning network discovery on or off, we could also change our current network from a work group to a domain if we like. Now I'm currently connected to a domain here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original computer and we'll show you how to do this. So I'm just going to minimize this here. And if I then go back here and scroll down, you can see that this computer here is currently connected to a work group. So if I hit change settings, and we'll click continue. And then we'll click the change button. And we'll select the domain radio button here. All we need to do to add our machine to a domain is to enter in the name of the domain. And of course, once we click OK, we will then need to enter in the name and password of an account that does have permissions to add this Vista computer to the domain. And once we've done that, simply reboot Vista and we're connected to the domain. Okay, well, the final thing I want to talk about in this video on Windows Vista networking is internet connection sharing. Many home users have more than one PC or they have additional networkable devices such as a PDA and they want to have each device access the internet. Of course, the best way of connecting several devices to the same internet connection is to use a router with a built-in switch which enables you to plug in several devices at once and they can all use the internet. And since routers nowadays are pretty cheap and they can come with inbuilt wireless access points and print servers, they're certainly worth investing in. Now, once you have one of these routers, you don't need to use internet connection sharing at all, which is preferable. But if you don't have a router, that's okay. You can use internet connection sharing from the Vista computer that's directly connected to your dial-up or broadband modem and then share that connection so that other devices can use it. The only downside is that the computer that's sharing the connection must be switched on for anyone else to be able to use the internet. Whereas if you had a router that's connected to the modem, then any device will be able to access the internet as long as the router remains on, which would be the case as normally you won't turn it off anyway. Now the other condition for this to work is that the PC that's connected to the internet will need to have two network cards in it, or at least likely it's going to have to have two. I say likely because if it's a dial-up connection that you want to share, you won't need that second network card. Also, if it's a broadband modem that's connected through a USB interface, again, you won't need a second network card. However, if your modem plugs directly into your Ethernet port on your computer, then you're going to have to have a second network card for other people to be able to connect to your computer. I will point out though that before we get started here is that although you can use internet connection sharing with a dial-up modem, you'll probably find that it's painfully slow. Well, dial-up is painfully slow at the best of times anyway, so you really want to have a broadband connection for this to offer you any sort of good internet browsing experience. So I'm going to go back to my remote desktop connection here. And then we'll click on Manage Network Connections. Now, if you have a broadband modem or a dial-up connection directly connected to your computer, then you'd see that connection listed here. Now, since my internet connection is provided through a router, I won't be able to share it directly. However, we can certainly simulate what you'd need to do if you are in that situation, as I do have two network cards here in my system. I've got a fixed Ethernet one and then a wireless one. So you'll need to choose which connection you want to share. That's going to be the connection that currently has internet access. So in this case, let's just assume here that my local area connection, my ethernet connection, is actually either a dial-up connection or a broadband connection that I want to share. So I'm going to right click on it and we'll choose properties. Now we'll select the sharing tab and then we'll check this box to enable internet connection sharing. Now in the drop-down box here, 
we'll need to choose our second network interface that other devices in our network will connect to. And then that'll allow access to the internet. So I'm going to select my wireless network card here. Now we can also allow other users to control or disable this shared internet connection if we like. Now I'm just going to leave that box checked and we'll click on OK. Now when we do so we will get a message like this telling us that our internal network interface, which in my case is the wireless one, not the modem one, will have to have its IP address changed to 192.168.0.1. And that's fine because Windows is going to do it automatically for us, so we'll click Yes. And then we'll click OK. All right, now internet connection sharing is now configured. So all we have to do now is to configure our other devices. The other computers that want to connect through this one, and we need to give them an IP address on the same subnet as our internal interface here, and that's it. So let's just assume that I'm on the other computer now at home that wants to access the internet. We can simply go and right click, on our network card and choose properties and then we'll choose internet protocol version 4 IPv4 we'll choose properties and then we'll need to change our IP addressing so that it now has a value of 192.168.0 followed by any number from 2 to 254 so choose any number in that range it doesn't matter and then finally, we'll need to enter in the default gateway that points to our internet connection sharing computer. So what we'd need to do is enter in 192.168.0.1. So again, if this was a, a second computer at my home, I need to point it back to this one. And that's it. It's really easy to configure, but it's largely outdated now since routers are so cheap. Most people who've been around computers for a while pretty much no longer use internet connection sharing. Now the final thing you'd probably want to do is if we go back to what would be our internet facing connection, so this one here as we're simulating it's going to be our dial up or our broadband connection that's plugging directly into our computer, the other thing you'd really want to do is to turn off file and printer sharing so we'd uncheck this box on our network facing interface so that it's disabled so anyone connecting from the internet can't get access to our files and folders. Okay, well in this video, we've taken a look at the various networking options you have with Windows Vista. And as you've seen, depending on the hardware inside your machine, there can be a lot of choices you have to start connecting your computer to other networks. We've looked at configuring a hardwired Ethernet connection, wireless networking, VPNs, and even dial-up. So armed with this information, you should now be able to go ahead and configure connections to a variety of networks from your Windows Vista PC.